There's those climate indicators, a lot of them trending towards neutral. However, the Man and Julian oscillation has leapt over from two to four and is continuing to shift over to five. So what happens when we're in phase four? Well, this time of year doesn't really mean much except in the southwestern U.S., warm and dry through California, Arizona, out into West Texas and Colorado. And except for California, that's indeed what we're seeing. The surface maps show in kind of a quiet pattern. The northeastern U.S., however, being affected by the remnants of that strong occlusion. And that's continuing to decay into a 999 millibar low. And with that, a lot of rain, although we are seeing some splotches here and there of snow and even some grapple in Massachusetts. There's a look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This also includes the temperature in these dotted red lines. You can see that the column is much colder over Pennsylvania, close to that upper level low. Minus 28 at 500 millibars, so it's not too hard to get a very steep lapse rate from the surface all the way up to the mid-levels. A similar situation off of San Francisco. This low is slowly drifting into Central California, so we are seeing conditions going downhill on the West Coast. And in between, a large ridge all the way up the Rockies, and that's producing some widespread fair and warm weather throughout much of the central U.S. As we mentioned, we do have an occluded system in the northeastern U.S. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s this afternoon, and that extends from the surface low over Massachusetts and stacks slightly to the west to that upper level low. So there is still some tilt in the vertical, so it's not totally quasi-barotropic just yet. The visible satellite imagery definitely showing a cold core appearance. Extensive open cell cumulus all the way from Virginia up to Pennsylvania. We have some mid-level cirrus that's kind of debris from this activity. But as we look out to the north in Canada, there's more of it. So all of this indicates very steep lapse rates. If we go to pivotal weather, you can see that bullseye right there, 534 decameter thickness contour. And that gives us a thickness center right there, a very low thickness. In other words, the thermal profile in the vertical is way over on the left on the scutee, indicating very cold conditions. And sure enough, if we go to the center of that bullseye and bring up the forecast scutee, very steep lapse rates. We go from 30s and 40s at the surface to minus 40, up at about 22,000 feet. And the tropopause rather low. All of this is the stratosphere. These types of systems are strongly diurnal. Wherever you have a little bit of heating taking place within those breaks, you get showers. So they just continually rebuild, re-intensify, and then when the sun goes down, they start to taper off a little bit. And you can see as we go into the nighttime hours, we get that surface load gradually drifting offshore and the precipitation begins winding down. In the southeastern U.S., not much cloud material. This indicates some strong dry air infection has worked into that region. And there it is, the one kilometer winds and specific humidity, which is basically the same thing as dew point. Not exactly, but in general, these lighter shades indicate 40s dew points at that level. And as we get into the greens, we get into 50s and 60s. So there has been an incursion of dry air into much of the southeastern U.S. And only when we get up into the northeastern U.S. do we pick up the steeper lapse rates near that mid-level low pressure area. Further down to the south, though, let's take a look at the Scooties in southern Georgia. And we do see that there are some steep lapse rates in the lowest 5,000 feet. However, the air mass is too dry to support clouds. So at the most, that will support some gusty winds. But above that, strongly capped. And that's all warm air because we're getting closer to that subtropical ridge as we go south. And there you can see those gusty winds, those red marks on the wind barbs. Those are indicating gusts above the sustained wind speed. So 
gusts are up to about 20 to 30 knots this afternoon. Let's take a look in South Carolina from Big Rig Steve's video feed. And not a lot to see. He's parked there at a gas station. But we can see the flat cumulus right there, indicating the presence of that mid-level inversion. And I can see a little bit of movement of the treetops there, indicating the winds. And he's going to be located right up here in this cloud field. So he's on the very southern periphery of that large occlusion. Further down to the south, red flag warnings in effect for much of Georgia and northern Florida as well due to the strong dry air advection, low relative humidities, and winds. And further up to the north around the Blue Ridge Mountains, we do have frost advisories, especially around Asheville, for later tonight. In the south central U.S., a little bit of disorganized thunderstorm activity popping up. We do have a slight risk out for the Pecos, Midland, and Monahans area with a marginal risk extending further north. But you can see there's a few storms developing outside those areas. We got this one complex here northeast of Abilene and an older one that has fallen apart up there near Lake Texoma. The high resolution rapid refresh is forecasting thunderstorms developing later this afternoon in the Permian Basin, the Pecos River, and on up into eastern New Mexico. You can see how that comes together. Those do kind of look a little bit high based, very similar to what we see in the summertime. And some of that will persist overnight in western Oklahoma, probably a little bit of upper level support with that. And then they will start diminishing as we get into the morning hours tomorrow. So that's what we have for today's convective outlook. Slight risk out there in West Texas. Then for tomorrow, widespread activity all the way from Medicine Lodge down Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls, and Del Rio. The stronger cells will be up in Oklahoma. And as we go south, the main risks will be hail and winds. At this time, Initiation tomorrow afternoon looks most likely out there around Wichita Falls, maybe down to Abilene. Then we get a little bit of a Texas two-step with additional cells developing in central Texas during the evening. Heading up into the northern plains, high pressure all the way from Texas, Arkansas, up into Minnesota. We have this weak occlusion dropping south from Manitoba into northwestern Minnesota temperatures near that system in the 70s. And as those temperatures come up, looks like we're getting a few spots of convection out there in the Black Hills and in northern Wyoming. So we're definitely shifting seasons here. And then further north, we've got that occlusion coming out of Manitoba. Looks like the lapse rates are a little bit stronger, just enough moisture and instability to support some stratocumulus fields and maybe a little bit of vertical development. Things are definitely getting unstable out there in the Rockies, showers developing in southern Utah, northwestern Arizona, and even out there in New Mexico. Elevated fire risk in southeastern Arizona, southwestern New Mexico, due to very warm conditions and low relative humidities. And the real story we have this afternoon, this big occlusion spinning off of San Francisco and Monterey. So you've seen that on the surface chart. In fact, let's bring that up. And there we go, that's what the structure looks like. The center of that low is an occlusion, but down to the south, a little bit of bare clinicity, and I put a triple point down there south of the low. And that triple point, the warm advection area, kind of supports this cloud shield right there. So the front's running something about like that. There's the cold front, warm front, and then the occluded front. And there's the low pressure center sitting out there all fat and happy off the coast of Monterey and looking for a way in. And that will be coming into California tonight. Here's a look at how things will evolve overnight. Heavy rain along the central California coast and further south tomorrow morning, heavier bands working into the Los Angeles area. That's in close proximity to that triple point that I showed you just now. There will be some heavy convective cells within this. The Snow levels will be down to about 3,500 to 4,000. Rainfall amounts will be about half an inch to one inch 
and in the foothills a bit heavier, one to two inches. And there could be some heavy snows in the mountains. So maybe Ron Chalfant out there, he's in those higher elevations. He may be getting a bit of that snow as well. And then a lot of activity spreads into Nevada for tomorrow. However, with the lower heights trailing across California, the lapse rates will continue to be on the unstable side for tomorrow. And we go back to the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This is good for three main reasons. One is keeping track of the lows, highs, ridges, and troughs. Number two is looking at the lapse rates. You can look at the 500 millibar temperature. I've got that right here on this chart. And that shows you where the cold mid-level conditions are. And with cold mid-level conditions, you get steep lapse rates. And of course, number three is the dynamics, where you have these vorticity lobes crossing the contours that indicates strong dynamic lift. So there's going to be all three of that working on California going into tonight. Then for tomorrow, mostly left with depressed thickness values. Most of the stronger dynamics head up north into the northern Rockies. But here comes a strong quasi-geostrophic disturbance out of the Pacific for Saturday. That will affect northern California, especially the northern Sierras. And that will bring snow levels down to about 5,000 feet. So I would definitely expect problems there on the interstates and in the passes for this weekend. And it's not going to be over until Tuesday. And it looks even like by Wednesday, another system working on California. So definitely an extended period of precipitation. And hopefully that will stave off some of that wildfire potential going into the summer. And if we look at the National Drought Monitor, looks like most of the drought problems are in the Central Plains. California looking much better. The only problem areas look to be in central Oregon near Bend. And checking in on the northwestern U.S., pretty strong marine layer, and right there, some sort of eddy working down the Pacific coast. Inland, though, very warm, and the story inland is going to be extensive snowpack melting. We've got flood advisories which continue in Idaho, northwestern Colorado, northern Washington, western Wyoming, with that massive warm-up and the melting of extensive snow in the mountains. Utah Department of Transportation, way off here in the corner, they reported a massive mudslide in Little Cottonwood Canyon, 100 feet wide, 4 feet deep, and there is helicopter footage out there on YouTube, so you may want to check that out. And as we go north into British Columbia, a push of cold air coming from the Pacific and in the Alaskan interior as well. There's actually frost advisories in effect for southeastern Alaska. And if we go further north, there has been a little bit of moderation of the air mass, starting to see a lot of temperatures coming above freezing, but still a little bit of snow hanging on out there around Nome. Then looking out there in Canada, Temperatures are coming up into the 20s and even a few 30s. But if you take a look down there in the Northwest Territories, it finally happened. 80s out there south of Yellowknife. Yellowknife itself is up here. They're looking at temperatures around 60, but some very warm air all the way down into Alberta. And we do have heat warnings in effect for central Alberta. They're expecting temperatures from 84 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, 29 to 31 Celsius. And then as we go to the east, mostly under the influence of that occlusion there in the northeastern U.S., bringing a little bit of cold air southward, temperatures rather mild there, and cloudy, drizzly weather. So it is May. We're getting into tornado season here. It is the 24th anniversary of the Moore tornado, May 3rd of 99. That was an especially damaging tornado. The main problem, though, just not much moisture. Now, this shading scheme here that we use, oranges are going to be 60s dew points, and purples are going to be 70s dew points. So we are starting to get a little bit of return flow into Texas. That'll help out for tomorrow. There's how things look later in the day. 60s coming all the way up to Kansas, and a little sliver of 70s in Waco, Austin, and Houston. Then for Friday, some of the moisture gets carried up there into Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, 
And over the weekend, more moisture makes its way north, starting to get some involvement of those upper 60s and lower 70s dew points. So we're going to see thunderstorm chances gradually ramp up going into next week. And you can see that convergent flow there in the Great Plains. That's going to spell many days of thunderstorm activity. Of course, everything depends on how strong the cap is and whether we have the instability. So everything is key with the upper level conditions in the springtime. And you can see we're under the influence of ridging for tomorrow. So that's going to suppress the thunderstorms to a certain extent. And then as we go into next week, a little bit of troughing starts to set up there in the southwestern U.S. And by Tuesday, even stronger troughing entering parts of the Great Plains. So we'll take a closer look at that for Friday's show and get an idea of what's coming up then. But one strong trough there for Thursday and Friday that could be associated with some significantly increased severe thunderstorm activity. So that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Bob Little. Thank you very much for your support. And I'm going to leave you all with some footage taken in Casterville back on Friday with some severe thunderstorms that rolled into the San Antonio area. And you're going to see Greg lose control of the drone just briefly with those strong outflow winds. Some very spectacular footage, and that's some of the best I've seen in a while from here in Texas. And just as a reminder, we're starting to take orders for the fourth edition of Weather Map Handbook that has just been released, and there's where you can order. So we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.